There's a reason why for the last 13 years, startups overwhelmingly prefer to build on top of AWS. We have the largest number of services, making it easy for you to take on some of the biggest challenges with the smallest teams. We also have partnerships with the top VCs, accelerators, and incubators around the world, making it easier to secure your next round of funding. I'm a solution architect uh, with the AWS uh, Start uh, program. Uh, what we do is we work with startups in the uh, education sector, and we help them build their uh, uh, services on AWS. So We Power Tech is AWS's diversity and inclusion outreach program. The program is really twofold. One is to increase the number of underrepresented technologists within the industry, and the second is to provide a platform for them to be seen and heard. If you're wondering how the AWS evangelism team might be able to help your startup, there are many ways. We're technically credible across our entire catalog of products, so we can help you figure out which services might be able to meaningfully impact your business. We also want to help tell your story. So if you're building something cool, we want to know about it and help spread that message to the world. So you might end up on stage at an event like AWS Summit. If you're a startup, you should also definitely check out the AWS Lofts. These are event spaces that are free to anyone with an AWS account. And you can treat them like co-working spaces, but the awesome thing about about them is that we also have people like technical evangelists like myself, solutions architects that come and give hands-on technical workshops and sessions to help you learn how to more effectively utilize the AWS products and platforms that you're already building on top of. We are a dedicated team of people that love startups. That we just want to come and help you with whatever we can, whether it be technical or business focused. We are here to help guide you and make sure that you know you do have a say in what's going on. We do get your feedback. We do bring that feedback to the service teams. That is what we're here for. So hi everyone, welcome to another Startup Grind virtual event, uh, live from Islamabad and with our amazing speaker from Silicon Valley. Uh, just to give you a background before of, of Startup Grind and what we're doing before we start with the session. So this month Startup Grind is running a mentorship month series around the globe in more than 600 cities, uh, 125 countries around the globe. This series specifically for the Pakistani ecosystem is supported by a bunch of amazing partners from inside and outside Pakistan. Startup Grind, again, is the world's largest community of startups, founders, innovators, people who are trying to do things differently. Uh, and we bring together the community around the globe. We have been doing this for the past 10 years. I personally started the Islamabad chapter three years ago. And over the past years, we've hosted more than 110 digital leaders across Pakistan. We now have chapters in more than 12 cities. We've hosted some of the leading uh, entrepreneurs, investors, educators, inventors, government professionals, not just from inside Pakistan, but all these amazing individuals from uh, all, all across the world as well. One of the highlights of our work has been the Startup Grand Pakistan conference that we did in November, where we brought together more than 80 speakers from inside and outside Pakistan uh, to talk about the future of, uh, the digital future of Pakistan. With this series, we have our amazing partner AWS offering two, uh, two perks for the attendees. So number one is that you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentorship session. After the event, we'll send you the link on how to sign up for it. Uh, the second one is that you can get AWS Activate Cloud credits for your startup or even if you're an individual starting up something, we'll send you the link on how to get these credits after the session as well. With this, we come to today's session, which is the third session as part of the UI of uh, the ROI of UI UX series. Uh, this is our third event. I think there's four more to go. This is like part of a seven event series with our amazing speaker and my dear friend, Mudas Sarazini, all the way from Silicon Valley. To give you a brief overview of the amazing individual that Mudas is. So he is an enterprise UX designer, strategist, researcher and speaker based out of San Francisco, Silicon Valley. Uh, he's live with us all the way from Silicon Valley. It's 8 a.m. there, so we're thankful to him. He's also the UX UI instructor at UC Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley. He works as the lead interaction designer at Wells Fargo, leading uh, US bank, where he kind of leads their interaction design effort for the commercial electronic office portal. That portal does $13 trillion of transaction every year. Uh, Mudassir is also the amazing evangelist and catalyst who brought the Urdu language or the Nastalik font, as we recognize it, to Apple's 2 billion iOS devices. Uh, he does product design talks and workshops around the world. 
or to help teams understand the ROI of UX like this one. But he also organizes a monthly design thinking meetup in San Francisco or used to organize physically before COVID and hopefully after COVID as well. Uh, so we are really, really thankful to you for joining us for the third time and hopefully uh, for the upcoming sessions as well. So over to you, Melissa. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Arjus, for, for a super awesome uh, introduction. So let me start sharing my screen and um, from there we will go. Yeah. Perfect. I hope you're seeing my desktop. So... Hi there. Good morning and assalamu alaikum from you know, California. Uh, thank you for joining me again and asking me superb questions in my last episode. And please keep it coming. And even if you have questions, uh, you know, after the session, please reach out to me uh, or the link uh, on the link LinkedIn. Uh, thank you, uh, Startup Grind and Arzish, uh, my awesome friend, uh, for arranging such an amazing series of webinars. You know, it's not just mine, but there are so many other webinars going on from Startup Grind Islamabad platform. Two, two thumbs up for you all. So let's begin. <clears throat> uh, let's do recap. So before we start working, uh, you know, uh, what, what we did, you know, uh, so before we start working on our uh, product and counting our, our ROIs, we have to make sure we exhaust ourselves and the stakeholders with as many whys as we can. Then we talked about the idea that, you know, we cannot build a product for everyone. We have to solidify our understanding regarding the target audience, right? So this is what we learned uh, in, uh, in our last series. Uh, now, today, the second you know, uh, part of our uh, ROI framework, right? So we will explore how to understand the customer's context and what, our cust what, are, our, what are our customers' need. And what we can build to fulfill our customers, like how to build it, right? So uh, today we are going to explore when, where, and what. So let's find out how we can understand our customer's context. And uh, the, I say when and where, actually. When means timing of our product usage. Where means location, where our products going to get used right so if you combine when and where so you what you get you get context so this is the part the context where you need to exhaust all the expected environment and to get the clue where our customers might be when they are going to interact with our app we must have a concrete understanding of our why and whom this is how it's going to help you are they using our application while they are mobile? Or they're using it, using it when they are watching TV, you know, that's a living room environment. Depend on what we found out during our why and whom, you know, uh, steps. So for example, for example, let's take an example of fitness tracking, tracking app. We can easily guess the environment of it. However, in some cases, we need to dig a little bit deeper. For example, uh, you know, uh, what's going on today? Now the fitness tracking app cannot, uh, like we can imagine it's using uh, in home now. People are not going that much for running or hiking and what have you. So the whole context changed. So we have to make sure we did, you know, apply those negative cases as well. What might gonna happen if that ideal environment is not available? So for that purpose, we need to sit, sit with our target audience, right? As I said earlier in my last episode as well, that we have to identify in the whom step that, you know, and see when they usually need that type of app, especially, and also bring all kind of past experiences into consideration to understand for whom we are building, right? And also start listing your negative scenarios. So try to answer the following. Uh, when you want to identify the customer's context. Where are they physically when they are in need to get the problem solved? What are the trigger events? Why user need to get some problem solved? What was the cause? You know, identify those subtle clues and document them. Create the triggering, triggering event map. And to extract those events, 
you must be aware of journey map and i am i will talking more about the journey journey map today so i find personally journey map is very interesting tool it tells you so many things about your target audience their pain points their context and what have you so we will talk more about it and then try to extract you know uh, the key components of it then identify one more component of the context which is time as i said earlier right how long they took to overcome their problem problem or their task right how long it took them from going from point a to point b did they try to utilize any other option for example any other app maybe your competitor app super awesome opportunity for you to do the competitive analysis as well at this point <clears throat> now measure their one more important thing all right <clears throat> physically when we are in person and we are talking so what's more important like you know how we talk our words are perceived like i i think 13 person and rest of the thing that we perceive is through body language and through the voice tone right so measure their body language and see how they felt about the experience were they happy or like, nah, it's okay. Like, I don't care. It's just, you know, that was the only option available to me. I just applied. So when user is talking to you about their problem, do focus on their body language and their voice tone. Do not just listen to their words because sometimes what they are saying is not going to be resonating with their body language. So these clues start documenting. <clears throat> so uh, when I said documentation, you know, a lot. So it, it's very important, right? Because then you can share it with your team or, and our human mind do not remember every single aspect, right? So you should have, a, when you're doing the user research around it, so make sure you are recording those videos. And obviously you have to take the permission from your, uh, you know, intended user for that. Now, <clears throat> Let's talk about need. Have you noticed a very fundamental change in our lifestyle? We all are now looking for options to get something done online, right? So need food? Okay. Over here in San Francisco Bay Area, it's DoorDash. It's school classes? Oh, we have Zoom, right? Everybody is now on the Zoom. Uh, like mostly, like I would say 80%. Uh, they were going to 90%, but because of the all security issues and thankfully Zoom reacted, you know, and they did put some measures around it, but still, right? So we are all using and any other online platform available is uh, second thing uh, can come to my mind is the Google, uh, Google class and Google Hangout, right? So this is only possible for all those jobs which can migrate and, and, and unfortunately, you know, it is only possible for those jobs which can migrate online easily. Some jobs cannot be transformed into the digital realm. That's, that's in effect, right? So this is how we are identifying the need. Even if we have to pivot our ideas, we have to make sure we are crystal clear about the need. Anybody of you uh, remember the Flickr story? Like, you know, Flickr, they actually, the team started with the uh, game. However, what they noticed that People are actually using their platform uh, to, uh, you know, share the uh, photos. So what they did, they understand the need of their, you know, uh, of their user customers. And then what they did, they pivot the idea. So make sure you are noticing the ultra motivation of your customer. Motivation is the core of any need. Because there must be some kind of trigger, right, which kicks in when your customer is uh, actually looking for something to get it done. For example, uh, we know Fiverr, you know, amazing service, right? So you can get lots of things done under $5 or around $5, right? So what is my motivation to be on Fiverr as a buyer? I think my motivation is to find the low cost, low cost way to get my log logo done, right? Because I'm a startup founder, for example, let's say, and money is the rarest thing in my pocket. So that was my motivation to get on the fiber and get my work done. So how we, you know, uh, craft the, uh, I would say those, uh, needs in a proper way. <clears throat> so there, uh, so user stories is an interesting tool. 
it will help you create a connection between users context and their need so very popular in uh, agile methodology so beware and but here's the thing beware that you must be using a very simple language and they call it gherkin language gherkin is a human readable language for system behavior description which uses indentation to define the structure of document each line starts with one of the keywords and describe one of the steps so uh, the format is simple uh, and it's in front of you like as a role uh, as a type of user i want you know i want what's my goal and desire performs uh, what's my task in in this scenario so that what's my external benefit what what i will achieve right so start writing this in this format it will help you to visualize in a simple way what's what are the tasks going to be and then down the road you can actually create uh, a task for uh, developers like hey you need to build this you need to build that and what have you so be as simple as you can when writing a user story do not use jargons and domain specific word stay around the problem or problems you have identified for example the startup founder want a low cost logo design job so that i can start creating my pitch deck let's unpack it goal and benefit right so what is goal goal is what i as a customer want benefit is why i am doing it my reasoning right so very simple remember in our why exploration and you know a couple of slides ago uh, i did mention the journey map so journey map sometime i think again in my opinion is a swiss knife you know uh, kind of uh, tool so is army knife kind of like a tool right uh, in ux it helps you to find so many things at so many level of your design and development fascinating very interesting and i really uh, love you know this tool a lot uh, you know and you don't need to just follow your uh, follow the format but this is a suggestion from nielsen norman group there are some key uh, components i will let you know i will tell you actually and just use them create your own but there's this super simple way like you know these three columns are uh, it's kind of like what kind of phases user is going through the journey i'll talk a little bit more about it over here so according to nielsen norman group a journey map is a visualization of the process that a person goes through in order to accomplish a goal in its most basic form journey mapping starts by compiling a series of user actions into a timeline simple series of user action into a timeline next the timeline is fleshed out with user thoughts and emotion in order to create a narrative right did they like it no i don't like it so you start create you know capturing those, their uh, their emotions as well and start writing down on a piece of paper and you will understand right so this narrative is condensed and polished ultimately leading to a visualization so most journey maps follow a similar format at the top as you can see a specific user a specific scenario and corresponding expectation or goals in the middle high level phases that are comprised of user actions thoughts and emotion at the bottom the takeaways opportunities insight internal ownership some says thorn bird and a bird and i think rose there are so many different ways they have so many different you know a uh, verbiage around it so don't worry about the verbiage whatever is the simplest possible you know uh, word you can use just use them because you want to understand customer problem as simple as you can right so once we are done with our like you know uh, 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 why whom where and when right so let's imagine we we we, we figure out everything over there like for why i'm doing it for whom i'm building it and and also my target audience context it is time to start thinking about solution right so in this at this stage i usually this is what i say the sky is blue and grass is green don't hold yourself don't judge any ideas just write them down as many ideas as you can right <clears throat> this is our what scenario i mean what you know the step actually so this is where you have to ask yourself what exactly i have to build for my target audience best approaches again is build x whatever right for whom right and that when and where 
to why also be candid you know be be candid with yourself constantly ask this question constantly why build x when y exists right because you must have your competitive analysis in front of you so you can actually you know not repeating the same mistake as your competitor did so always keep asking why i'm building this when this exists so what 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 are my reasonings so what type of product you should be building you know i call it the facade of what because uh, should it be a digital or a physical product who knows should uh, what should be the platform what type of interfaces you know maybe audio video uh, ar vr you know or you don't need kind of interface right so uh, here's the thing when you are developing uh, or you know you are thinking about starting up an idea or building a product make sure you exhaust these kind of questions already because you should not be making costly mistakes as i told you earlier if you heard me in my previous talk or you know uh, out out of the startup grind uh, podium as well uh, i i lost 50000 right in my uh, early day in my startup back in uh, between i think uh, 2008 to 2012 right and uh, we were building a right product but our approach was not uh, accurate i think the medium was not what we were expecting so uh, <clears throat> we lost 50000 right so that was a costly mistake we did so don't repeat those kind of you know uh, uh, mistakes make new ones but don't repeat something which already is done by someone so always learn from uh, other people's lesson and exhaust all kind of detail right that what kind of product you have to you have to build and should it should it be digital or physical product or what have you and make sure you understand the interface in which you have to you know uh, provide a solution <clears throat> so this is where you have to you know uh, starts brainstorm with your team about the ideas and list them all out don't judge here don't create any type of idea filtration think of it again as a sky is blue grass is green kind of scenario i typically list the ideas in a simple notes that but if you are working with a remote team when utilizing the you know i think then utilizing the uh, google doc is a good start don't worry about any specific tool just google doc simple just stay simple as 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 much as you can do the time boxing technique obviously let the you know if you are like you know uh, in a in a team where like three or four people are uh, huddled in in a room so let the facilitator pick one body one person as a facilitator and let the facilitator set up the stage define questions like how might we solve the x or z problem for our customer generate as many ideas as you can all ideas are welcome all right and make sure once your session is concluded you do document the ideas in a way that your team can browse it at later stage and i keep insisting again and again that documentation is very uh, very important it will liberate you from guesswork and it will not put any kind of like you know uh, memory uh, cognitive load because then you can easily refer back to your documentation that what you guys were discussing uh, what were the ideas and uh, you know what you came up with right and it will be very helpful in your uh, future product development because then you can go back and see that you know what kind of ideas you discussed and this is what i actually did at well fargo as well so we always document our discovery work even right even if you don't like something uh, like you know we listed tons of ideas even though we didn't go with that that's fine but we have the documentation right so sometime it happened like after 3 years we went back and we were like oh we already have discussed this idea let's bring it back on you know uh, on the radar it start working around it right so very simple you have to you know focus on that kind of documentation So all right friends uh today uh, we learned how to understand the when and where of our target persona and then we explore the what what we have to build for our customer and uh, what platform we have to choose uh so in my next episode we will find out how to prioritize our ideas right so there is a technique to prioritizing the ideas and 
once you are actually, you know, uh, what are the steps we have to take uh, to solve it? So once you took that step, how we can validate our, uh, you know, our solution. So next episode will wrap up our whole ROI framework. All right. So then we will jump in and start unpacking the different kind of matrices to observe our return on investment for UX <clears throat> and our outcome based on our uh, ROI of UX framework. So solid foundation brings a stable and a scalable product. So that's why I have to unpack that framework of ROI first. So you can build a solid foundation for your upcoming product and then the matrices that we have to implement around it to find out like, you no, know, are we on the right track or not? Right. So we will talk more about those matrices, uh, I think in fifth and sixth episode. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free. I will, you know, stop sharing my screen and, uh, and what we're going to do, I'm going to open the chat window. All righty. All right. Where is my chat window? Oh, it's here. Okay. Okay. Let's, you know. All right. <clears throat> Any questions, fellas? People are quiet today. Where am I? Yeah. I think we got one question. I think generally people are maybe learning much faster than you expect. So that's why the number of questions is reducing. <laughs> when I say research or agnostic, I, what do I mean by it? Don't stuck with one tool only, right? So use multiple tool according to your context. Good question, Osman. So uh, don't think, you know, it's kind of like if you, you know, there's a saying, right? When we have a hammer in our hand, and we see everything as a nail, right? So I'm not your voice. I can only see my video. All right. So I don't know. Uh, I think must be something else. Something else. Maybe wrong. Akbar Fezan. Fezan is, you know, private message me. He can see my video, but he cannot hear my voice. Yeah, it, it must be an issue on his side. He needs to connect the audio. I'll help him. Don't worry. So let me go back to Usman's, you know, uh, question. So yeah, research agnostic means, uh, Usman, that you don't need to stuck with one tool, right? So uh, I would say there's a very interesting book if you are actually, you know, uh, brand new uh, in this uh, world of product design, then, uh, and you want to test your ideas quickly when you don't have that much of resources like a big corporation, has you know uh, they usually have so uh rocket surgery made easy interesting book by steve kirk i guess steve kirk. all right so we can see let's see i think this is the one very interesting book uh steve rocket surgery made easy very interesting book all right uh must you know i think uh you should it should be in your library because the best part about this book is it will tell you you know how to quickly uh how quickly uh, get the user you know testing done <clears throat> what are the different ways you know to uh, get the user testing done so it's very uh, user research you know so interesting one, please do, you know, uh, bookmark this app, uh, bookmark this uh, book and download it. And I think sometimes uh, some books uh, should be uh, good enough to be in the physical format instead of digital one. 
Michelle is asking, does documentation help build credibility in the future as well? <clears throat> okay, define credibility. What do you mean by that, Michelle? Like what kind of credibility we are talking about? Trust, yes. It is very important, right? So, uh, because here's the thing. I believe when you start documenting, your ideas with the team, that transparency will prevail, right? So everybody gonna automatically start trusting each other, right? So nobody is gonna be pulling leg or what have you or whatever, any kind of like, you know, corporate or startups politics is gonna be happening. So everybody, uh, I believe, will benefit from the uh, documentation. As I said earlier, right? So whenever we discuss our ideas, even like, you know, we have multiple solutions. We do actually, or multiple ideas about, you know, to solve one problem. We do document it at Wells Fargo because it is very important for us to make sure that everybody's on board. No, uh, you know, there's uh, transparency is up there. We know what happened, who talked, which idea and what have you. And it helps, right? Sometimes the ideas in current context may sound uh, like crazy, but guess what? There is, an, there is another context in the future, right? Which may gonna be, you know, uh, utilize this, uh, this, that solution that we thought, oh, it's like, you know, oh, so it was a crazy idea at that time, but not anymore. Okay, uh, I hope I answered Michelle's uh, question. So Usman Koker, uh, when you do journey mapping, don't you think it is heavily influenced, limited by the researchers on level of exposure, culture, religious boundaries? What do you mean by limited? I think this is what we try to understand. What's the current problem, right? That what's going on, what are the boundaries uh, of my users and you know what they're doing culturally, what are the things they are supposed to be doing? What's happening with them right now? And you're now, right? No? Uh, no, um, what I'm trying to ask, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Swan. Yes. Uh, so what I'm trying to ask is, the, uh, you know, the level of exposure that the researcher himself has, he, uh, you know, uh, uh, and he's trying to do research for a, uh, for a, uh, on a, for a project that's, Say, I mean, he said, I'm I'm sitting in Pakistan, but I'm researching something in uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, doesn't the journey mapping exercise uh, okay. uh, get uh, you know like uh, uh, doesn't my own my own bleeps don't they yeah. in the journey mapping exercise? Perfect. I got your question. Yeah, thank you. So user researcher is remote. So how it gonna help right to build the uh, journey map? In my opinion, strictly my opinion, that kind of like, you know, user research should be done in person. For there's a reason for it, right? So unless and until you are in the, if you are not in the user's environment, I don't think you truly understand the user context. Yes, you can ask, you know, some questions, you can do some video chat and what have you, but the feeling that you need to have cannot be achieved through zoom or any other call, you know, any other tool you have to fly to South Africa, meet with your user, spend a day or two, do the immersive, you know, uh, studies and then come back. You know, that's the, that's, that's the beauty of UX because you cannot get lots of things done. You can do team collaboration online. However, the, when it comes to our research part, you have to be with your use in the user environment. And second important second thing, if a user researcher is biased, then he is not a researcher, right? So uh, again, my opinion, because to be a user researcher or even uh, the user experience designer or professional, whatever you can call, they're supposed to be biased. They're supposed to be thinking from user perspective, first of all, and, the, and how they can you know, help their business, right? But when they are doing the research, they're supposed to be extremely biased about it. Like they should be asking the right question. I think in my 
uh, second ep episode I did uh, talk in detail about how to ask the right question right and uh, I did uh, mention a book the mom test earlier as well so it's a very interesting book it will guide you and teach you actually how to ask the right question and how to ask the question basically that's what I say but super awesome question thank you Sma. Uh, so sorry. So if I may I, I ask one more question, follow up question. So if I remove ethnographic studies from this research because I'm doing it remotely, so won't that heavily influence uh, my research? Uh, mother, mother, create a lot of problems in my research. Yeah, I believe so because you know you, what you're doing. You are not anymore empathizing with the user, and to empathize, you have to feel exactly what they are feeling or at least get into their environment. For example, if I say, hey, I am doing the research uh, on uh, hunger around the world, right? And I'm sitting at the comfort of my zone, you know, in, in, at, at my home, it's my comfort zone. I, I'm not in that, you know, area. I'm not in, you know, uh, Sudan where, you know, people are dying hungry. I, I, I did not feel the pain, actually. I, I was not in their environment. My, my room is all, you know, fully air conditioned. Uh, I have a water bottle next to me. Now imagine if you're going there, doing some research, understanding you know what's going on in their environment, you might end up creating something what these two brothers from South Africa did, right? Remember the wheelboro? Mm -hmm. They invented it, right, for to carrying the water. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. uh, Junaid Akram also, you know, he also uh, brought the same product to Thar. Junaid and Mani, I guess, or Mori, what's that guy name? So, unless you are in their environment, you won't understand what's going on, right? How you feel the heat when you are in the heating in, in that environment where you know it goes around 110 or something. I hope I answer your question. Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Yeah, so there's one new question. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you have to say about current times where being empathetic with the user means maintaining a distance with them? It's nobody ever expected it, right? We have, uh, I think, you know, uh, this pandemic is interesting for us a very good learning you know opportunity and uh, about being empathetic in this environment i have to share a, a story with you uh, yesterday my wife's uh, friend she had a birthday and usually when we throw a birthday we invite friends at our home right we cut the cake eat dinner play some games and go back home right that's typical birthday parties are guess what happened even though social distancing in place and uh, i'm not in alameda county which is a san francisco bay area county i'm just at the edge of it like so we are in the central valley san joaquin county uh, so it's not yet forced in our county to put on the mask, but people are actually putting, you know, uh, they put on the mask when they have to go outside, even for a walk. And, you know, uh, some counties are more, uh, you know, strict and they are saying put on the gloves too, right? Guess what happened yesterday? My wife and all her friends, they did celebrate it. Uh, they did celebrate uh, her birthday. And guess what they did? Actually, they asked her, to be at her you know doorstep and uh, what they did actually they uh, did the car parade and they were all honking you know the loud music in the uh, it, it was like 5 p.m not a curfew time i mean no a quiet time right uh, in our neighborhood 10 p.m and uh, after there's a quiet time it's very uh, typical in uh, any american neighborhood so uh, they did the car parade which was such an awesome experience right so they did cut the cake uh, she actually uh, brought the cake, you know, uh, in the front yard, in the front door. They cut the cake 
and they all sang happy birthday while sitting in their car so we human always find you know uh, these kind of you know innovative ways to stay connected even though in this kind of situation and second thing uh, so this that, that example was like you know as you said uh, empathetic right by maintaining the distance second is getting quite popular we all are start using zoom right we have a office teammates we used to go to our office my office is in san francisco downtown but we are more relying on now uh, zoom to see each other again it's not a in person experience but at least we are trying to be empathetic as much as we can for different contexts in whatever medium we can use right i hope i answer your question so uh alina second question uh, saying this owning to a shift in an ongoing field research i was conducting i don't understand what do you mean by that alina <clears throat> Oh, this is postscript. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, so this is uh, so yeah, yeah. So again, you have to find some you know uh, unique ways to uh, you know get at least start you know observing user while maintaining the social distance. So as I gave you the example of you know uh, birthday party, like you know they they did cut the cake and you know uh, they were all like you know uh, in their car. Surprisingly, it was such an awesome you know. uh experience when i saw uh my wife was showing me the video that you know what happened so yeah awesome anyone else come on ask questions guys as, as many as you can Scott, Yasir, Ali, Hawes, Tahir. I don't see. Uh, I have one more question. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to know if you have yourself uh, gotten any examples from your own research uh, where you had uh, issue with uh, the la language during research. Oh, okay. Like. so how did you tackle that because you know there's an issue with understanding the uh, the the language uh, the other language so that creates issues in uh, your own finding sometimes sometimes there's also a difference in their level of uh, their definition of empathy it also has uh, you know like there the the a lot of variables that can differ due to language difference yeah so that's how do you tackle that yeah very super question uh, osman you know i never had that kind of experiences at the moment right so whenever we do user experience our customers are actually talking in english right typical you know uh, typical culture here uh, but when i was building the urdu application you know i it's my native application right a na native language uh, i would say uh, so i हेलो सलाम सर 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 आप मुझे मुझे एक बात बता सकते हैं सर, मुझे आज तक कभी जिंदगी में नहीं पता चला कि आपकी कंपनी क्या करती है यानी कि आपकी सर्विसेज क्या प्रोवाइड करते हैं होल्ड ऑन उस्मान लेट मी आंसर उस्मान कोकर्स क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट आई गोना मीट यू सो language right so uh, language thingy uh, when we were building the uh, application for kids so i was thinking from their perspective right so what how they going to learn urdu language it was a challenge for us so we app uh, apply a couple of languages you know sorry couple of tactics however your question is a little bit different i say because your participant are speaking in a uh, you know a different language and I, i i think get the translator i don't know i i don't know how to answer this question actually so maybe the translator can help you to understand you know to understand the whole aspect what's going on from the research perspective what kind of question you have to ask 
and also do some kind of you know i would say uh, do struggle or i mean do 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 to understand their uh i would say slang so that's that was the biggest uh, issue when i came to america for me to understand the slang and you will laugh out loud if i say i got trained by family guy to understand the pop culture you know the family guy cartoon yeah so that was a very it's, it's a funny thing but it did taught me it did teach me about the american pop culture to understand subtle jokes when you are talking from that you know perspective that hey if somebody is giving me that kind of comment so i said oh okay i don't understand what do they mean by this or that so i have to go back and you know do some research actually uh on uh, a family guy and understand oh this is what it means you know that that it means so yeah so i don't know if i have answered the question but nahi nahi theek hai that 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 makes sense it's just that i have a lot of clientele in uh, the middle east and there are different dialects so yeah. uh, it causes it, you know like uh, my arabic is limited so it uh, it creates an issue when they speak it in a different dialect and i have to note the, you know like convert their interviews into uh, uh, you know information for my uh, projects so that i wanted to know if you had some better solution for that that thank you but thank you this helps yeah yeah no why don't you partner with somebody who is uh, there in the field on the ground okay yeah all right all right so let me can i unmute this usman i think this question is for <coughs> arzish or do you offer ux review feed okay first what do you have to say about current times yeah scott is like you know hey hey scott yeah <laughs> family guy that was a very funny thing yep so uh, atif ikbal how to conduct user research when you don't have any experience all right so here's the thing uh, atif if you want yeah. to uh, if you want to conduct the user research right so what you have to do and you never done it then first read the uh, read what the user research is and then uh, you know come up with certain kind of ideas i would say like you know some made up application or if you observe any kind of problem right just see around that problem start documenting it start talking about you know with the people uh, who are actually uh, uh, who are actually uh, so yeah so uh, like nobody you know uh, came with the prior knowledge everybody spent their time in learning and learning the best learning is you know learning by doing and the book i shared with you uh, atif the rocket surgery made easy so super awesome a uh, starter book for you to you know learn about user research and there's another very boring book uh but it's kind of like a dictionary of uh, user research observing user experience by mike uh his last name is always you know challenging for me mike kunoski right so this one very interesting book my mentor she recommended me somewhere in 2008 when i was starting my ux journey so it's going to take some time to read because very thick and it's kind of like a dictionary so before going to uh, so do you uh, so before going to hassan's uh, you know uh, uh, question let me go to usman actually hello usman you have a question yes sir i have one question sir i i don't understand what services you people provide and how i can avail your services when you say you people you mean the people who runs the startup grind yes yes this is a question for mr awesome arzish <laughs> thank you so much i'll just take one minute on this so i run the startup grind chapter in islamabad this month jo ki karta hai aapke liye zara urdu mein karta hu ki we do monthly events around the world aur har mahine hum isi tarah ek event karte hain pehle physically karte the अब हम वर्चुअली करें इसका मकसद ये है कि ज्यादातर फ्री में आप जैसे जो लोग शुरू कर रहे हैं कुछ कुछ एंटरप्रनोर्स हैं टेक्नोलॉजी में कुछ सीखना चाहते हैं उनकी लर्निंग के लिए भी अरेंज सेशंस लाइक दिस 
तो आई होप इससे जवाब मिल गया बाकी मैं ईमेल अपनी डाल देता हूं यू कैन ईमेल मी और टेक्स्ट मी समथिंग हां थैंक यू सर all right usman i am putting you on mute now so let me go to uh, hasan's mushahid yes i do cuz i also run my small consulting company uh, consulting firm besides do, doing all the two awesome jobs that i am doing right now working as a lead interaction designer well as for go 9 to 5 and then 3 days a week i spend my time with uc berkeley in the evening and coincidentally today is my uh, orientation class because my class but ne- my next session is going to start on uh, april 28th and it will go all the way to uh, till the month of october but whenever i find time in between i do uh, consult you know and i go through the garage studio is my tiny start and i would say it's not a garage studio uh, as somebody who speaks urdu usually read it's a garage <laughs> i have to always correct them because garage is from romanian language uh, this spelling is from romanian language for garage and you may have noticed i will share with you later on uh, i set up my office in the garage because that was my dream to set up my office in garage when i came here in 2002 like oh one day i will have you know a setup in the garage because the inspiration i got to be in america is from the movie pirates of silicon valley uh, it's 90s movie yeah. that's that yeah so do we have any any more questions we do have some time so yeah please ask away we have eight more minutes to go unmute me please usman khogar okay he has some question okay unmuting usman khogar can i unmute it unmute his audio i i cannot oh yes okay sure uh, usman oh hold on hold on sorry i have to click and wait arzesh can you help me i am unable to unmute him okay let Yeah, it should work. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, it's, okay. Mute now. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. uh, uh, Madrasa Bhai, uh, can you uh, uh, tell me, uh, or uh, you know, uh, what what are the things that we need to focus on? What aspects of design uh, that we need to focus on, in your opinion, when we are looking at ethical design, your ethical UI, your ethical HCD? Oh okay so uh this guy was Neil Nayar Nair so he first wrote a book about habit right and then he is he wrote another book which is kind of like you know in distractible it's, it's kind of like if you are from Pakistan and you read the Allama Iqbal's uh, famous poem it's kind of like shikwa and jawab shikwa so it's uh, in urdu it's like complain and and i respond to a complaint so uh, the poet is complaining to god and then the god responded it so his two books are just like that right so he first you know uh, made sure how to uh, build the product which become you know which we get hooked to right and then he wrote another book which is actually uh, how not to get hooked <laughs> it's funny right and distractible so uh i i would suggest you know uh, when you are doing the ethical design so observe the dark patterns right so uh, there's a there's a, a list of patterns which are known as dark actually in user experience so don't utilize them right so always make sure that you are aware of those dark patterns so then you can stop using them in your uh, design for this is the first line of defense and obviously uh <clears throat> we are human being we are we we are aware of certain ethics uh agnostic of religion and culture we know like lying bait and switch uh these are the things and you know uh, are are actually uh, not acceptable in any culture right <clears throat> so apply and see where you can fit them into your design but 
again i will insist go and uh, read about uh, read that dark patterns and i think i remember uh, i i don't remember a book right now it's like the name is slipping off from my head i guess i need uh, one cup of coffee one more cup of coffee i guess to wake wake myself up but i will share with you and i will share you know uh, with arzish or uh, on the youtube channel when is this uh, thing going to be posted this video it's a very interesting book but again google up dark patterns and you will find you know tons of list and there's one website which actually organize all the dark patterns you know list so read them and do not design around it then you know that's the best approach first approach i would say Okay, Shikha said this, and okay, nice. Okay, so if we, I mean, I I can ask a question. If you if you have time, yeah. So how how do you think the Jugaad mentality in in South Asia uh, affects oh. user experience? Uh, yes, yes. In this region. Oh yeah. See again, you know. Uh, the uh, what they say mother is necess uh, necessary is a mother of invention yeah, yeah right so uh, so when so i i live in both part of the world pakistan and you know and also in, in this in a valley and spent i spent 23 years in uh, you know in pakistan then i came here almost now uh, like came in 2002 so uh, almost 18 years now right so i believe when you are that's what i said earlier as well uh, in another conference when you have constraint you become more creative right so uh, that's how i'm seeing myself uh, with, because i came from the uh, environment which which had too many constraint right so it made me more innovative more uh, creative and that's what you know i believe that even though here in the area where you have abundance of everything or almost all the resources put some artificial constraint so that's why time boxing your uh, you know uh, your brainstorming session and uh, making sure that you only use xyz technology you cannot go beyond and also like putting constraint uh, related to your uh, money right so you should not be spending x amount of money more than that or this and that and create the budget and then try to spend your life around it so that's where the jugar mentality you know if i if i bottom line that thing if i say hey how should i explain it so i do i, I can explain it in a way that constraints makes you a uh, creative makes you more innovative because then you are there is actually a uh, a guy in uh, a fictional character in american pop culture uh, known as macgyver so he always creates some uh, cre uh, you know crazy things from uh, common household products and what have you right so that's that's where you know you can learn about constraints and how you can be more creative and this is what the jugar mental mentality is absolutely thank thank you so much for shedding sure. your i think there is uh, this amazing book on jugar as well it's written by uh, one of the co-authors i believe lives in palo alto we met him last year as well navir jo the the book, oh, name of the book is jugard something something frugal innovation so it's the only book on jugard i guess let's see if we can find and share it to the world yeah it's like it's like two or three you know book Yeah, Navir. Uh, yeah, this is the one. The frugal beef. Yeah, that's exactly. You are. You have to be frugal, right? You don't have enough money. How are you going to solve it? <laughs> that's good. So this is the one, guys. That if you are seeing it, I gonna paste it here. The link it's for your, you know. Awesome. Thank you. This is. I gonna take a look at it. This is amazing. Jigar. Okay. Good. Thank you, Arzish. No, thank you so much for taking out the time. If we, if you allow, and if we don't have any more questions, uh, we can wrap up as well. Sure, uh, guys. Any last questions?
Going one, twice. Oh, all right, cool. Perfect. Third episode. Thank you so much, Arzish and Startup Grind. Thank you so much for joining us from all the way and waking up early. I know it, it may not be early for you. It's way too early. 8 a.m. is way too early for me. So, <laughs> and, and looking forward to our next sessions. And thank you for the amazing audience, the ones who are on Zoom and on Facebook and all the other platforms for joining. Uh, see, yeah. Thank you. Bye.